Hey, Ruchem Aboyim, welcome everyone. I earlier today posted a video that I made with AI on invideo.io. <coughs> and in order to produce that video, <coughs> all I did was I put in the top that it was a Dvar Torah from the Kushis Levi, Parshas Bo. I wrote that in English. And then I copied and pasted this from Sfaria. Only Lush and Kodesh, actually, in Sfaria, it does have English. I only copied the Lush and Kodesh, only copied the Hebrew, put it into the uh, AI generator there on invideo.io, and it produced that video. <coughs> I did, you know, change a few words here and there. One of the things was that they pronounced, you know, they said Kedushas Levi instead of Kedushas Levi. So I just, you know, went in and edited it a little bit. So I spelled L-A-Y-V-E-E, -E, so you should pronounce it Levi, things like that. And I added a few tweaks here and there, nothing major, but 99% of the audio was generated from that uh, website. Video, I didn't keep most of the video that they put on there. I did replace that. Uh, which I regret that I didn't do for some of the other videos that I posted on that AI. But I'd like people to say in the comments, and if I figure out how to do it, or have time to do it, I think I know how to do it, I might put up a poll on my community tab, you know, as to whether you prefer this format or the AI. Uh, the AI is not really perfect, it's not exactly what the Dvar Torah says, and I didn't edited that much to get it into what the Dvar Torah says. It leaves out pretty much the end of it, but it's still pretty good, I think, uh, for what it is. And I think it sounds better than me, looks better than me, but I don't know, my wife and kids say that it's lazy that I do the AI, but I think I'm more lazy in how I make these videos because I don't edit them at all. It takes a little bit more work to make those AI videos than to make these. Uh, the other issue with the AI videos is that for free, I only get 10 minutes a week. And I used five minutes for a work-related video that I did not post on YouTube. It's just something I use cause to do uh, staff uh, introductions, staff orientations. But anyway, it's a very interesting tool. And it's just, it's fascinating to me is that I can put it in in Hebrew. I did it also with the, the Dvar Torah from the Basai and something I've taught before. I've taught this Dvar Torah before, but let's learn together. And tell me what, what you prefer. I, for one thing, my introduction already, I've already been rambling on longer than that whole video is. So are my videos too long? Is it better if I make them longer, shorter? I know uh, some other people on YouTube, they make three, four hour videos. I don't know, people watch them, they have a lot of subscribers. So I don't know which one's better. But anyway, let's start learning. So the Pusik verse in the book of Exodus, chapter 10, two verses, verses 21 and 22 say, or I remember learning this from Rabbi Weinberger way back in the day, probably 20 years ago. Um, so, and, and I pretty much, this is one of my go-to Divrei Torah. Again, it's one that I learned from Rabbi Weinberger. You can probably find on Why You Torah the recording of that year. And it's uh, just one of my favorite Divrei Torah, and I look forward to it. it happens to be Parsha's bow is my bar mitzvah in Parsha. This Shabbos is actually my 40th birthday on the Hebrew calendar, so we're excited that my English birthday was on Sunday, so I'm in between the two birthdays right now, this week. So the Teyon Chal God says to Moses, stretch up thy hand, Toward the heaven, and there will be darkness upon the land of Egypt. And it's usually translated as, as 
the high look of Berdichim and Rabbah, like Yitzhak and Sar Sarshim and Berdichim, because the Yulayim goes to Amen, is going to show us that Rashi says, Yomish Choshech means that it was something palpable, something you could touch. However, the Slavi is going to be, at least in a homiletic sense, but maybe even Al Derech Pshat, and I remember saying this over in Eretz Israel to one of my friends who was not really a fan of Hasidish and Torah so much. And he said, That's, that sounds like Pshat when I said this over. He was very impressed with this. Very Hoshavi Grimad now. I think he's more into Hasidish and Torah maybe now. I remember I would take him to a tish here and there. I know he he always said something that I kind of agree with is that being a, from the Hungarian background and adopting much of the Hungarian Hasidic Shaderach is that the Hungarians aren't really Hasidim. Uh, in the classic, in the Baal Shem Tov sense, we're more like Hasidic Ashkenaz, really. Uh, if anything, is, is more of the influence. Uh, but we include the Baal Shem Tov. You know, we include everything and everyone. You know, like I said, I remember I was, I was by a Tish Hanukkah by Sabah Rebbe from Kirsiol, and he said, uh, you know, he, he, he quoted the Chidor and called it a Hasidish for which, you, you know, you wouldn't hear that in Chabad or maybe Square, they, they're very to the Rachaim Akkadish, but the, to say that the Chidor is a Hasidish Sefer, that's something that, uh, and that's all, not from Hasidic Ashkenaz, it's a Sephardish. Uh, Corona, of course, but nonetheless, all of these things are very fascinating. Uh, but I, I, that's what I love about the Hungarian approach is it's more or less holistic. We, we include everyone. We're not excluding any svarim, and we're not, and, you know, the way that I, I, I particularly like Rabbi Yitzhak Levovich, the Woodridge Rav, he says, you know, that you don't need all these labels. Say, I'm a Breslover, I'm a Chotlubavich, or I'm this and that. It'd just be a regular Eid, you know, <laughs> and, and he said, uh, you know, it's not boring because you can learn Breslov and you can learn Chabad, you can learn Moranayim, you know, you can learn all the Swarim. You, you, know, you don't have to pigeonhole yourself. Um, truth is, you know, you, you'll, you'll go to a Hungarian Dayan, a Satmar Dayan, he'll be a Bucky also in, in the Piskei Alocha of Rav Avadia. You know, Satmar Rav himself, he learned Swarim that he didn't necessarily agree with. Gedolami didn't necessarily agree with, but Torah is Torah, and we have to learn Torah. We have to learn everybody. Vadi Yosef Schusigleno, of course, the Gadol Ador. And the thing is, you don't see in the literature world so much that they're learning Chacham Avadius from Torah. But uh, this, I'm saying this over because one of my Rebbeim, he said he had a, he, he wasn't sure about Amara, and he brought it to a Dayan, a Satmar Gishtim to Dayan. And then uh, he's, the Dayan asked him, who are you to be poskening on Maris? And he said, I, I have Shemush and Maris from so-and-so and so-and-so. And then he said uh, that Rav Avadia says like this, and he was nervous. Oh, he mentioned the chief rabbi of Israel. And, and the, the Dayan said, yeah, I was thinking of that. That was, that was, that was part of my cheshman when I'm making this psaq. Anyway, it's... Uh, neither here nor there, but uh, I'm, I'm deviating from what, you know, again, we're nine minutes in, and uh, so again, so, so the British Varov, and, and this friend of mine actually were, I told us, Aaron, and he said, yeah, they're not Hasidim, they're Hungarians, they're okay. <laughs> this friend of the Shtikla Visnagin, he's very Choshev in German, he's still sitting and learning in the Mir Yeshiva, this is 20 years later, what am I doing, working for a living? Well, Hashem, I remember this, this Yigraman, before his chasana, he finished Shas, and I was jealous of him. Not that I'm saying that I have such chokhmah, I'd finished Shas Mishnayas already, I'd finished Tanakh already, but I didn't finish Shas Babli by that time. And it took a long time before I finally got my act together and started to learn Bikiyas really the way I want to learn. And now, Baruch Hashem, I'm learning, I've, I've finished Shas three times already, and I'm already, I just finished Gemara Sukkah today, and so to start Beya today, 
and I remember learning Bea when I was a kid, you know, because when I was a kid I learned Dafyomi and a few of the short Masechtas, and then, you know, I, I really regretted why I didn't stick to it, you know, I, I would have finished Shas a long time ago, but Hashem, it's already a few years since the first time I finished all the way through, Baruch Hashem now, I'm uh, doing, what, 35 plot a week, and uh, Hashem, it's, it's a Kabbalah thing. So anyway, uh, but I, I like sharing Torah with you all, and, and again, please comment, and again, remember, when, when we get to 5,000, Linetta, we're going to make a giveaway, we'll figure that out when we when we cross that bridge, when we get to it. But anyway, so let's but we're, let's try to get there. I'm also trying. The big goal that I have is to get 4,000 watch hours. And if you can watch my videos, I really appreciate it. I don't know if it counts if it's at double speed, but if you want to watch at double speed. <laughs> so anyway, this word, Yomish Choyshech, the, the, the Kedusha Slavi is going to explain a different shot what it means, Yomish Choyshech. That, that the, but generally it's translated that it was a darkness that could be felt, that's how I know that JPS 1917 translates it. Right, so he did so, he, he picked up his, his hand, and this is where the other kasha comes in, the other question comes in. And unto all the children of Israel there was light in their dwelling places. So again, that's the book of Exodus chapter 10, verses 21 and 22. It's fine, Barashi, Shemdakek, Allah, so, the Heilige Kedusha Slevi, he says we should look at Rashi Zal says uh, of how uh, he looks at what it means, this term, but we could also homiletically understand or even make the shot, the simple understanding of what it's, it's written. And unto all the children of Israel there was light in their dwelling places. If it is the way Rashi says that the darkness was something palpable, so then it should have said that the darkness was not in their house, because that darkness, the way Rashi learns, it was not the lack, not the absence of light, but it was something itself. And but if that's the case, so why would there be light? It just it should have said there were no, there wasn't darkness. We were al Medrash. So we can explain this first about what it says in the Medrash, Shmois Rabba, Yudalin, Mehechen Achoshech, Mechoshech Shomala. Where did this darkness come from? From the supernal darkness, Shenema Yashech Choshech Sisroi, as it says in Psalm 18, verse 12, and, the, and God sets darkness as his hidden place. Yesh Lahavan. So we can understand it like this. That the darkness of Egypt came from the darkness that the psalmist was referring to, that he sets darkness as his hidden place. This is a hint to the hidden light. And it seems like we ex could explain it like this. According to what the Gemara says about Rav Shimon Yochai Nosen, that Rabbi Shimon Yechoi set his eyes on Yehudim and Gerim, and he became a pile of bones. So, what does it mean he put his eyes, he gave his eyes on him? Because we know it says in Scripture that it's not good for a tzaddik for, for a righteous saint to punish someone, Venera. So it seems like this. That the light of God, the light of the blessed Creator, is infinite. When God decided, He came up in His will to create the, His world, because He's called merciful, He withdrew that light on the level of the quality of those who are receiving the light so for example the world of the seraphim the dragon angels according to their level 
Metein Oilam Hachayus, with Oilam and Lol Achim, and so to, to the level of the angels that are called the living beings and the angels that are simply called angels. They're all different levels. Mechayim Luchol Oilam is Elyonim, and so to for all the supernal worlds. And those supernal worlds are always on one static level. According to the measure, according to the measure of what they received on the day that they were created. Even though it's a machlokus, let's let's say This is the standard understanding: is that angels are static beings and cannot; they have no free will and they cannot go up and down in their spiritual levels. There are very high levels, but they're stuck there. They don't look above from their level. So it should not be canceled. It shouldn't be nullified in their existence. Because if they look up and they see that great shining light from God, the infinite light, they, they'll, they'll just disappear. And they also don't look below their level. That's what's hinted to in Isaiah chapter 6, verse 2. That the seraphim had six wings, and with two they covered their two wings they covered their face, and with two wings they covered their feet. They covered their face so they shouldn't look above and be canceled from their existence. And also they shouldn't look under their level. They should just know themselves. So the the Jewish people, God's holy people, his holy community, Aliyadeya Torah and Mitzvahs, through the law and the commandments, through the Torah and the Mitzvahs, Osim Levushim, they make garments for themselves, spiritual garments, Olim and Madrega Madrega, and then they go higher and higher from one level to the next, Aliyadeya Torah and Mitzvahs, Yeshlam, through the Torah and the Mitzvahs, law and the commandments that they have. Behini Yashayim, who was Olam, She'ein Lahem Torah Mitzvahs, but the wicked heathens, who don't have Torah and Mitzvahs, the Law and the Commandments, they're like the angels, they're always on one level, but it's a low level. She wrote some Lishpur, I don't mean good righteous Gentiles, we're talking about wicked people like the ancient Egyptians. She wrote some Lishpur as a Rishoyim, and we want to break the wicked people, all you got to do is show them that supernal light. And since they don't have Torah, the law and the commandments, the Torah and the mitzvos, to make garments, lalos mudregel mudregel, to go higher and higher from one level to the next, mizeh hamapolish alehem. This is their downfall. Mizel remes begemara doesn't ain of bow. This is what it means. That's hinted to in the gemara and the Talmud about Rabbi Shimon that he gave him his eyes. Doesn't mean, just mean that he looked at him. I feel love of your alien. He shined on him from that supernal shining, that light. He he let this wicked person see with his own, see with Rabbi Shimon's eyes, see with the tzaddik's eyes. This was this one. He was a yid. He was a Jew. He was a wicked Jew because he did connect himself to the Torah and the mitzvahs, to the law and the commandments. Eino yochalasus levushim lispol dehiras elyon. He cannot make garments in order to withstand that supernal light. And, uh, you know, a shofei alav of a hiris, that light is shining in him. While you day zed nasa gal shalat summers. And that's, through that he became a pile of bones. Mazeyavor posak v'yomish choshech. And that's how we can explain the verse and the darkness v'yomish we were translating it not that the darkness was palpable, but rather that the darkness was removed. And the, the darkness here we're talking about the timsum, the withdrawal of God's light, whatever that means, whether 
the Hasidim say it's Simpson Lav Kapshuto, that God's light is here, we just don't see it, right? And that's what it means that the darkness was removed. She asked her at Simpson, Then you remove that constriction in order for that supernal light to shine on them. Because they don't have the, the law and the commandments, the Torah and the mitzvahs, that itself was their downfall. Zerem is the Yisrael, and that's what's hinted to that unto all the children of Israel, she Yisrael Yeshlem Torah mitzvahs, that the Jews, the Israelites, have the law and the commandments. Lasus Levushim, Lasus Menudrega Menudrega. They have the garments that allow them to go from one level to another. That's the idea of Maisim Merkova. That it's it's like a it's it's a, a a vehicle, right? But not only that, but it's it's the way that they can withstand with the you know you put on a coat because it's cold outside, right? So the cold doesn't hurt you. Or and that's it doesn't that's why it says it doesn't say that there wasn't darkness. There was light in their dwelling places, meaning there was more light than there was before. And through this we can understand what the Gemara in the Darim Chesam and Beis says, uh, the Talmud in the, the Darim 8b, Lasid Lavo Yotzi Kadosh Baruch Hu Chamer Natika. That in the future God is going to take the sun out of its sheath. It doesn't just mean like the ozone layer; it's something supernal. Tzedikim is Rapim Ba, Rishayim Nedarim Ba. The righteous saints will be healed by the sun, and the wicked will be judged by it. They'll be punished by it. And it's the same thing. You know, you put on sunscreen, and you, you can absorb the vitamin D. And you don't have it, you could get a sunburn or even worse. Chas v'shom. The sun is a hint to the supernal light, and the sheath of the sun, the filter, is a hint to the constriction. Which means that the supernal light will be revealed and the Constriction will be removed, was tzedikim, and then the righteous will be healed, and the wicked will be punished. Yuvan, we should understand this. I'll say something as shikolapi courses that I saw from one of my favorites, is Rabbi uh, Joseph Hertz, the, chief, the old chief rabbi of England from the thirties. He said he brought there that there was a total solar eclipse on a particular day. Uh, that falls out that it would have been exactly in the way that the Chazal say would have been the time of Makas Choshech, two weeks before Pesach. And he, he brings all kinds of riots, and then he says that the that the, but the, a, a, a solar eclipse though only lasts for you know the totality is only a few seconds, you know. But you know, all right, it gets darker during the day, and it's light, and it's dark for the rest of the day. But it's not like what's being described. And, but then he also says that it was, you know, that, that things like this happen in, in the Middle East, that there's, he called it Hamsin, which is different than the Hamsan. But it's, uh, that it's, it, 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 that, that there's this type of darkness that it's thicker than any fog that naturally occurs. But then it also happened that there was a, a solar eclipse. But the problem is, that the way this particular person he was quoting learns it out was that the darkness wasn't for three days, but rather that the people didn't leave their home for three days because they were nervous about the darkness. But, and then he said that in Eretz Goshen there wasn't a total eclipse, and so that's why they had light. That's not shot. That's not how he learned it. But it, but it's interesting though. The idea could say that the. Um, Yenner, the uh, what am I saying? That the darkness uh, for three days could have been that they were looking at the eclipse. The people who had the Egyptians had the totality, and then they were blinded because they you're not supposed to look at the eclipse. Again, I'm not saying this shot. But it's very interesting because there's a similarity somewhat 
to what we're saying here about the the there being the light blinding the Egyptians essentially. Of course, it, it, it's much deeper than that, but it's interesting that there's somewhat that that's what I'm putting in there to to Rabbi Hertz in the Hertz Chumash. I'm adding that they were he didn't learn it out that they were blinded. But I'm I'm putting that in, and it's kind of a tzushtel between the rational, liberal, you know, apologetic approach of Rabbi Hirsch, uh, Rabbi Hertz, and the uh, and the Hertz Chumash, and and this from Kedusha Slavi, the Chassidish approach. Even though it really only means for Chazal, but we can say on a certain level, Elu ve'Elu Devrulikim Chayim, both this and this is the word of the living God. We should, we should be Zoha to learn Torah and get whatever it is that will give us your Shemayim, whether it's the rational or the mystical, we should really find the proper balance between the two and we should be Zoha to see only good things and that we should have Or B'Moish Vaisem, that we, the Klal Yisrael, should have Or, or is of Torah, we should have Torah and your Shemayim in our midst and be able to leave Mitzrayim and uh, and the air so thank you for watching god bless please like share and subscribe and, and we should be sorry you know the tzaddikim say that the energy for pesach comes from shabbos parsha's bow and then the energy for shvishal pesach comes from bishalach and the energy from shvuas comes from shvuas we should be zoiche to a a a chag kosher v'sameach i saw by the biala rebbe from b'nei brak when he came to Queens, he would always ask Parsha's bow, so we should have some shmura matzah. Uh, so if you happen to have some in the house, I know we have, if you want to have them Shabbos, I don't say you have to, it's not a mitzvah, not even really like a minig, but if, if it's something that you can, that would help your spirituality, it's something that I, myself, I, I like to do, because I saw that by, by the tzaddik, and if, if it works for you, could do the same thing so thank you for watching god bless please like share, and subscribe comment don't forget again the the giveaway um and uh let's try to get these videos um you know i'm, I'm really i really want to build up this channel so uh let's let's if you can watch videos all the way to the end it really helps the algorithm also and to like to share to subscribe to comment all these things help the algorithm and that's why, again, when I'm saying we're if we're trying to get to you know five thousand uh, subscribers, hopefully we get to four thousand watch hours before that. But I think if we get to five thousand subscribers, we should be able to do it. So um, I see a lot of people who watch the videos are not subscribed. So um, if you have a minute to subscribe, it doesn't cost you anything. All right, <laughs> I love you. Thank you for watching. We'll see you later. All right, how do I turn this off? This one. Is it working, this one?